today's world of high-speed connection, text messaging, and social networking, we often find ourselves searching for information. There are millions of blogs on the internet, news, sports, politics, and tech, but I bring it all together for you and present it in a relentlessly unconventional fashion. My name is Zinni Abraham, and this is The Blog Report. It's time now for politics. Hi everyone. On September 9th of 2010, a large explosion rocked San Bruno, YouTube's headquarters city in California, just about 10 miles south of San Francisco and two miles away from the San Francisco International Airport. I remember where I was at the time. I was at a restaurant called Pecan watching Channel 7 News and the announcer on Channel 7 and all of us thought that a large airplane had crashed. Wasn't that at all. Turned out that it was a large gas pipeline owned by Pacific Gas and Electric Company. It exploded and the subsequent damage led to $38 million dollars worth of destruction and the loss of approximately 68 homes. On, on top of that, sadly, the deaths of eight people, including 20-year-old Jessica Morales. Now, after hundreds of lawsuits and months of legal wrangling, the Pacific Gas and Electric Company was the only organization to know that the California Public Utilities Commission, which had been, which had been overseeing these talks to determine what the fine should be that PG&E pays had appointed former Senator George Mitchell, now of DLA Piper. DLA Piper is an enormous 4,200 attorney law firm with offices primarily in the United States and the UK. Mitchell brings an impressive resume, no doubt, but it's skewed toward international wranglings like, for example, in the Mideast, not for this situation. And on top of that, DLA Piper has a number, scores of clients that are in the utility business. And so it means that the CPUC appears to be assisting in making sure that PG&E has a low fine. PG&E is capable, reportedly, of absorbing a fine of up to $2 billion dollars and early estimates going back to 2010 said that this is going to cost PG&E a billion. But PG&E has openly said that they expect the fine to be only $200 million. That's absurd. The bottom line now is that there are many people, the mayor of San Bruno, citizens, construction rep work representatives who were involved in the cleanup of San, in San Bruno, who are calling for the CPUC to rescind its appointment of George Mitchell and give and open the process. Let them have a say. But I'm going to throw a name in that I think everyone should consider. Current Alameda City Manager John Russo. And this isn't from his behest at all. But John is a proven and I might add noted mediator and arbitrator in the state of California, officially certified. He's done many municipal cases in California. He's familiar with what's going on, well-known and well-liked by many municipalities and many public officials, including in San Bruno. So what it would take to get him is the permission of the Alameda City Council because John is locked into a contract as city manager and only the Alameda City Council would be able to give their blessing for him to spend some valuable time helping to resolve the sticky situation, which I know he can do. But the point that I'm making is that, by John's mention, is that George Mitchell is, again, undoubtedly, undoubtedly a skilled negotiator, a great analyst, and a great politician. But for this situation in California, he's not the right person. And I think the CPUC went on and deliberately got an outsider because that person may be more likely to eventually exact a lower penalty on Pacific Gas and Electric. That's just a guess. But 
the idea should be to bring in someone like a John Russo, but make sure everyone has a buy-in on who that person should be. Not just Pacific Gas and Electric Company, not just the organization that's responsible for all of that destruction in San Bruno.